Well, good morning again. Nice to be here with you. Scott's doing a sermon series entitled, If. So I'm not, Aaron's still going to, I don't want that to drive you crazy all for the next 20, for the next 35 minutes. <laughs> no, it won't be that long. And it's called, entitled, If. And this week, the if is, if you will deny me. Wow, everyone's favorite topic, right? Self-denial. Yay, we get to preach on that today. And I just noticed 10 people getting up and going to the restroom. It won't be that bad. Please pray with me. Loving God, uh, please open our ears this morning to hear your word and hear your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills that through these spoken words, we may love and serve you today, now and always. Amen. Self-denial is not a popular topic. And um, even when I told Scott what I was going to be preaching on, which one of the series I chose to preach on, he looked at me and said, you want to preach on that? Really? And I thought, well, that's not very encouraging. <laughs> but I think it's important. And we don't like to do it, do we? We don't like to do it for all kinds of reasons. We don't like to do it because we want what we want when we want it. I love this quote from Joy Davidman. Living for his own pleasure is the least pleasurable thing a man can do. If he doesn't nauseate his neighbors, he will solely die of boredom. Yeah, know a few people like that, don't you? In verse 23 and 24 that Dustin just read, and in Luke's gospel, Jesus tells us what it means to follow him. Now, what he says is very clear, but it's also very difficult to hear. He's telling us that if to follow him, there's a price to pay. Now, before this scripture, Peter has just made his declaration that Christ is the, Jesus is the Messiah. And Jesus tells him that his insights are from God and then goes on to tell him how he is going to suffer. And then he, and come to these verses, he changes his topic somewhat and starts to explain what it's going to mean for someone to follow him and be one of his disciples. For he says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, when he's saying this, he's telling his disciples and the crowd, but also us, what it means to be a disciple. I'm going to stop for a minute. Erin, can we do anything about this? Should I go to the podium? All right, let's do that. Because after all, 35 minutes is a long time. The word Jesus uses for deny yourself is a strong Greek word that means that a person must refuse to be thinking about oneself. Now, this is one of Jesus' toughest teachings. Tough because it's not only difficult to do, but it's difficult to even think about doing. He's telling us that we have to deny ourselves. And that's not very encouraging, is it? We don't like to say no to ourselves. That's so why it's so hard to overcome behavior that separates us from God and hurts ourselves and others. Behavior such as addictions to drugs or alcohol or pornography or behavior such as lying or gossiping or talking behind someone's back. I love what Max Cato says in his book, entitled, It's Not About Me. He says, what would happen if we accepted our place as sun, S-O-N, reflectors? Such a shift comes stubbornly, however. We've been demanding our own ways and stamping our feet since infancy. Aren't we all born with a default to selfishness? 
We relate to the advertisement that headlines for the man who thinks the world revolves about, around him. Self-promotion, self-preservation, self-centeredness. It's all about me. The people in Jesus' day knew what it meant to deny themselves, and they certainly knew all about the cross. Since it was something the Romans used to execute people in the most painful way possible. And most likely, they would have seen people hanging from them along the roadside. So to have Jesus tell them to pick one up and carry it would have come across as an unbelievable cost of discipleship. Something that would have both confused and frightened them. And particularly the twelve because I believe they had a totally different idea what it would mean for them to be disciples. Jesus has just admitted to being the Messiah, the long-awaited king, and he would rule. And the disciples thought, as his inner circle, they would rule alongside him in glory and honor. Their biggest worry was who was going to be held in the highest esteem. So when they heard Jesus saying these words, they must have been thinking, what's he talking about? As I mentioned before, we don't like to say no to ourselves. And when we do, we try to do it without any kind of sacrifice or hardship whatsoever. We want it easy. For example, we've even come up with some rules, diet rules, that will help people eat whatever they want and still lose weight. Let me tell you something. If no one sees you eat it, it has no calories. If you, and we all know this one, at least the women do. If you drink a diet soda with a candy bar, the calories cancel each other out. <laughs> calories don't count if you eat them with someone and you both eat the same thing. Food taken for medicinal purposes doesn't count. This includes toast, hot chocolate, brandy, Sara Lee chocolate cake, and so much more. I love this one. Pieces of cookies contain no calories because when the cookie breaks, all the calories leak out. Remember that. Finding easier ways to do things is a good thing at times. Where would we be without microwaves, appliances, or technology? But the problem is we've applied this thinking to our spiritual life as well. We want a quick, convenient, painless type of Christianity that demands very little from us. Martin Luther, the 16th century German theologian said, a religion that gives nothing, costs nothing, and suffers nothing is worth nothing. A religion that gives nothing, costs nothing, and suffers nothing is worth nothing. To genuinely and faithfully become a disciple of Jesus, we can't compartmentalize him and just follow some of his teachings. That's not Christianity. Rather, it's some kind of watered-down version of what really means to live out the Christian faith. In Luke 9, 23, Jesus speaks about self-denying, cross-bearing, and following him. And in a few days, he will live out this, his own commandment in a very visual and horrific way. He knows all about it. Denying yourself, though, doesn't mean withdrawing from the world, and it doesn't mean rejecting your personality or all your goals or all your desires because they're the things that make us who we are. And it doesn't mean doing selfless things in order to feel a little better about ourselves. But, you know, doing good things for people does make us feel good. And it does bring a kind of satisfaction, but that's not what Jesus is talking about. What he's talking about is denying ourselves to let go of our own agendas. Our own agenda. It means making decisions based not on what we want, but on what God wants. In short, it means living to please not ourselves, 
but to please God. So then what's our cross? It's the things that give us false sense of security and the belief that we can make it on our own. We don't need God. Things like our ego, our education, our money, and our relationships. It's our desires and goals that we know that aren't healthy. Those goals that hurt us physically, spiritually, and mentally. It's also following our own will, even when we know what we're doing is not in line with Jesus' teaching that Scott spoke about last week. Being dependent on God and doing things God's way is dramatically counter to our culture today, isn't it? Today we're told and rewarded for being independent, self-sufficient, self-assured, and confident. And while these attributes are all good qualities to have, taken too far, they leave us empty and lonely and obsessive and angry and insecure. We're not created to be alone. We're not created to do it on our own. We're created to be connected, connected to each other, but most importantly, to be connected to God. The cross-bearing that Jesus is talking about is that part of us that wants what it wants, as I said before, when it wants it. That part of ourselves that is sinful, prideful, jealous, and needs to be first and the best. To deny ourselves and pick up our cross means that no longer giving prior to the things and relationships that we want to have but giving priority to the relationships and things that God wants us to have. God wants us to have and supplied us with the Holy Spirit to guide us to have them. But it's no small feat, is it, to do those things? Because by our very nature as human beings, we want what we want. And we've been wanting it since we were an infant, a child, a teen, or an adult. Because in all those phases of our lifetime, we've lived in the hope of getting what we want. Here's how an anonymous writer describes this. If we, think our, if we think our kids mope and pout and throw tantrums when they hear the word no, our sinful nature doesn't react much better when it hears it. For it becomes jealous and angry and envious, discontented, Grumpy, frustrated, and yes, it even pouts. And even when we do try to do the things that God wants us to do, we often hear all kinds of other voices telling us that we can't do it or we don't need to do it. Am I right? Have you heard those voices? As a result, we find ourselves doing what a woman whose husband was trying to get the family finances together in a better way did. Her husband had asked her to stop buying clothes until he did get their finances under control. And she really tried. But one day her husband found a department store bag in their closet. Looking inside it, he found a new dress. Frustrated, he went to his wife saying, I thought I asked you not to buy any more clothes for a while. I know you did, she said, but I just happened to see this dress and the devil told me I had to try it on. Well, he said, you should have said to the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. And she said, I did. And he told me it looked just as good from the back as it did from the front. And so I just had to have it. Now, doesn't that happen to us? Not in dress buying, but you know those things that we think, well, okay, God, if that's what you want to, me to do, I'm going to do it. And then slowly something keeps nagging at us and those things in our mind saying, you don't have to do that. You'll be okay. You don't have to try that hard. It will be all right. You don't have to deny yourself anything. You can have everything you want. And we find ourselves kind of slipping back. 
But self-denial is not a one-time experience, unfortunately. It's not, a, not like our baptism, our sacrament of baptism in the Methodist Church where you do it once and that's all that needs to happen in order to have that sacrament completed. When we deny ourselves, we have to do it over and over and over again. Because in Jesus said in his scripture, there's that little word. Did you see that little word or hear it when Dustin read it? That little word daily. We have to do it daily. We don't have to, it's not something that we do yearly or monthly or even daily. Sometimes we have to do it hourly. That self-denial saying we are going to do what God has asked us to do regardless. But we can't submit our lives to Jesus on our own. We have to have the help of the Holy Spirit. It is only with the Holy Spirit that we can ever have lasting change in our life. We can try and do things our way or God's way by our sheer willpower. And I'm sure you've tried to do that, haven't you? You have wanted to do something, you knew you had to do something, and you said, okay, I'm sucking it up, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to get it done. And we can do that for a while, but then we get tired, and then we weaken, and then we stop doing it, and we slip back into that old behavior, but this time feeling even worse about ourselves because we failed. No, it's only with the Holy Spirit, only working with God, only saying, God, you need to help me do this. I'll do it, but you need to help me do it, that we can ever, ever have lasting change. And submitting to Jesus in Christ uh, Jesus is a choice, a choice that we make, and we make it daily, as Jesus said. Much like the manna from heaven that the Israelites got each day, each day we have to say, I need your strength, God. I need your determination. I need your help to do this today. And he will give us that help. But also, not only, oh, I'm going to have to move over here, Aaron. So let's see if I can put this on for a minute. OK, we'll do this. Not only is our cho do we have a choice to pick up our cross, because it's a choice. God will never force us to pick up our cross. God will never force us to do something that we're not willing to do. Because God has given us free will. It's a gift. And he will honor whatever choice we make, even if he doesn't like it. But we also have a choice of what size of cross we pick up. If I say to God, well, God, you could have Sunday. I'll give you Sunday, but the rest of the week is mine. So I'll pick up this little cross, and I'll just move forward with God. You've got Sunday. Or we can say, okay. See if it will stay there. Well, we'll lay it down. We're going to lay our cross down. <laughs> we could pick up a cross and say, you know what, God? I'll give you this and this and this, but I'm keeping this other little section for me. I can't give you that up. I can't give that up. I have to hold on to that because I'm not sure of what you'll do with it. I'm not sure what you'll ask me to do about that, and that's kind of frightening because you might ask me to do something I don't want to do. And so I'll pick up this cross, God, and so lead the way. Come on, let's go. I've got my cross. Or we can say, Christ, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'll pick it up. And I'm going to have to struggle with it, Christ. I'm going to have to struggle. I won't get it all. I won't do it all. And it's going to be hard for me to follow you with this. But I'm all in. We have a choice. And the choice is ours.
And we make that choice of what size across daily also. Some days it's easier to pick up that little one, or sometimes it's easier to pick up that heavy one. Because there's sometimes I'm just feeling really good about my relationship with Christ. And I'm feeling really strong and I've got it. But then there's other times when I'm not so certain. I get in situations and I'm not sure if God's going to come through for me or not. And I say, okay, that means I'm going to have to depend on my own free, my own will. Because I don't know if I can trust you, God, or not. And so I pick up that little cross. But that's not what God's asking of us. God's asking us to say, I trust you. And I know it's hard. And I know it's going to take everything inside you to do that. But the more that we can do that, the more that we can say, okay, I trust you. It's going to be hard for me. But the more we can empty ourselves of our will, the more the Holy Spirit is able to fill us with his will. And the more we are able to do that, the more and more we are willing to live out those things that God is asking us to do. We are literally God's hands and feet in this world. And he needs us. That's why he placed us here. He placed us here to do his work. But it isn't always easy. Doing God's work, there is some blessings attached to it. And you know that. You've done some things that God has asked you to do. And boy, did you feel good afterward. And you looked at the person and thought, wow, God, God had asked you to do something. You hadn't wanted to do it. But you said, OK, I'll try it. And then some blessing resulted for that individual in a way that you would have never, ever have thought about. I don't know how many times when I first started uh, ministry, I would get these ideas, something, a person's name would pop into mind. And I would think, oh, I should call them. And then I'd get busy and somehow it didn't happen. But then I started thinking, and then I started trusting that little voice, that name that popped into my head. And when I would call and say, you know what? God has put you on my heart or on my mind and I just felt I needed to call you. And inevitably, what I would hear on the other end of the phone was, oh, I can't believe you called. I have been sitting here praying that God would send me somebody. And that has happened over and over and over in my ministry, to the point now that there is no hesitation. When that little voice, or that name pops into my mind, you get a phone call. Because somehow I know God wants me to contact that person. Somehow God wants my voice to be his voice to that individual who may be just hanging on for some reason. And that's what God is asking for us. But you've also probably known that in following Christ, it isn't always a blessing. It doesn't always result in a blessing. Sometimes it results in suffering, doesn't it? Sometimes you've had to give up something as... Hannah was telling the kids, it costs us something. There is a cost to discipleship. And whether we're willing to pay that cost or not depends on how much we love Christ. Because the more we love Christ, the more we're willing to pay whatever that cost is. The more we fall in love with him and realize that we need him in our life. Without him, we're nothing then we are able to follow him and pick up whatever size cross that we need to pick up because we're doing it to please Christ, not ourselves. And we're doing it because we love Christ more than we love ourselves. It's a choice, folks. You have a choice. You have a choice whether you pick it up and you have a choice what size you pick up. He's leaving it to you. Amen.